am honestly so nervous sitting down to film this video right now and I don't 100% know why I'm nervous. Well, actually I do. It's because it's been forever since I sat down and turned on the camera and filmed the video. Hi guys. Hello. Welcome. My name is Ebony. If you're new here, welcome back to my channel. Let's welcome everyone back. Honestly, it has been, I think, three months since my last video, and truthfully, I don't even know where I left off, but within that time, I've been in a weird place with reading and writing until recently, which kind of goes hand in hand with my absence for lack of a better explanation of what's been going on. But essentially, I just felt like I was reading things that were wrong for me, and the stuff that I did read, I couldn't articulate into words my reading experience or what I was taking away from it. And then also for writing, I just felt very uninspired. I would write, but then I wasn't totally in love with what I was writing, just in a very weird mental funk, honestly. Um, but I'm happy to be out of it. I'm back. And I'm going to talk about, I think it's six books, some poetry, others fiction of what I've read recently. Without further ado, let's get right into it. It is now almost June and I just hit 10 books read this year, which is very low for me personally. I'm usually in the 20s at this point. So like I said, just a very weird year for me reading wise. So anyways, Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. I read this book. Um, it says I finished it on March 19th. Before I Let Go is kind of like a second chance romance novel in which we meet our two protagonists while they have just finalized their divorce. Their names are totally blanking. <laughs> I'm forgetting their names. But I just love the story. It was set in Atlanta. Um, I really felt the chemistry between the two protagonists protagonists which sometimes I have a hard time feeling in romance and I struggle with romance in general but this one I felt like it had enough for me like sustenance to hold on to because there was a very sad and like traumatic event that happened to our main girl our main woman um, and she talks about motherhood struggling with um, child loss and yeah it was just a very important read to me because it not only dealt with the romance but then also like the family aspect of it and how the children were impacted but it was still very fun and lighthearted. there were some great like moments within the story I really love this romance. I heard it's going to be adapted into a TV show or film. I'm forgetting which one, but highly recommend that you check it out, that you read it before it comes out. If you're one of those people who needs to read something before it comes out, did I tell you guys what it's about? Kind of. <laughs> the family, the two main characters have just recently gotten gone through a divorce. Um, they are going out into the dating world and be finding who they are as individuals outside of their marriage because they got together when they were in college. They basically started a business together, a restaurant that is now very successful in Atlanta. And the restaurant is basically an homage to um, the male, the husband, his family, and the wife is the more like business oriented person, whereas he is more of the chef. And it was just a very, like I'm saying, a very great representation, I think, of like a black family, black love. And then also, as I'm saying, like very true in real struggles within a relationship. And then also kind of like reconnecting and finding your love for one another, um, despite having traumatic things happen to you. And it discussed the importance of therapy. All in all, a great book, like I said, loved it. It was like, intense and emotional but lighthearted. I just think it had all of the right balances of everything that I'm coming to understand I look for in a romance novel. And then to get into some poetry, I finished this on April 16th and this is The Hurting Kind by Ada Limon. Um, this is my third poetry collection I've read from Ada Limon who I believe is sitting as the poet laureate of the United States for the second time in a row, I want to say. Or is it Natalie Diaz who is the poet laureate? I'm blanking. <laughs> but 
love both of them. Third Poetry Collection by Anna Lamone, in which it basically grapples with just read the back to you. I'm like I said, I'm having a hard time putting into words my reading experiences lately, but an astonishing collection about interconnectedness between the human and non-human ancestors and ourselves from National Book Critics Circle Award winner and US Poet Laureate Ada Lamont. Um, some of my favorite poems from this collection is Jar of Scorpions. I also liked Give Me This. I also like the namesake or the title piece from this collection, The Hurting Kind. And there's one line specifically from that poetry collection, from that poem, that I think encapsulates the main question or like kind of ethos of this poetry collection, why it was written. Um, and it seems all at once a vulgar life, or not vulgar, but not simple either. And throughout the poems, there's this kind of balance between the non-human and human. Um, as clearly stated on the blurb in the back. But more specifically in Jar of Scorpions, we read about like the speaker and her um, cousins or young family members too who collect a jar of scorpions and basically examine it. And one of my favorite lines for, from, the, from that poem is, we did what children do with tiny and terrible things. We trapped them so we could see more closely, intimately, investigate their particular evil doing behind the thick, clear glass of the mason jar, which kind of felt like, to me, Adam Lamone's entire process while writing this poetry collection, examining the evil doings or the kind of sinister or haunting aspects of human existence while also containing that and realizing that despite you know with life there's death despite and death in all terms in terms of relationships in terms of our connection to our ancestors and to the earth and the earth itself but um, highlighting the interconnectedness of that and the beauty but behind that entire process like Adelmon is very much I would consider her like a nature writer in terms of exploring these universal themes of the human condition, um, which is stuff that I love to read poetry about. And um, just a little fun fact, if you love Adam Lamone's covers, her mom does all of her cover designs. Um, so her mother painted this, her mother's an artist too, um, which is a nice little perk behind this poetry collection and I love learning things like that about poetry collections. Um, I will say this poetry collection by Anna Lamone was not my favorite of hers. My favorite is still The Carrying, but I did enjoy this and like I said, I really liked the whole purpose behind this collection. I just felt like not as many poems within this collection spoke to me at the time. But the ones that did have less, a lasting impact, I probably think about Jar of Scorpions, that poem, all the time. And particularly those lines that I read. So, The Hurting Kind by Adam Lamone. Let me see what's next. If you see me looking down, I've been keeping up with my reading journal, which I fell off hard with and probably goes hand in hand with why I've been having such a hard time articulate my feelings and thoughts behind a book um, because they're, they've just been jumbled up in my brain and now I'm putting those fragments, which we'll get into a little later, um, those jumbled fragments of thoughts down on paper, um, which is really helping. Okay, so next we'll move on to another poetry collection that I read in April, that I finished in April. April was National Poetry Month, so clearly I was in a poetry phase. Um, and this is Frank Sonnets by Diane Seuss. Um, this is the winner of the Pulitzer Prize in Literature, and Diane Seuss created a Seussian sonnet, and this poetry collection is clearly, as it says, all sonnets. These sonnets are interesting. They do have 14 lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, yes. These are 14 lined sonnets. However, there's like very little punctuation used and there, it doesn't follow a traditional rhyme scheme the way that like a Shakespearean sonnet does, um, which is fine. I love that. To me, this feels like a modern 
take on a traditional sonnet. There are quite a few things explored in this poetry collection. Um, for instance, there are sonnets in here and also I believe that the person on the cover um, was impacted by the AIDS epidemic that happened. And so we learn about that. We also have sonnets from like Diane Seuss's son who says something like very interesting and she records that down. It's just once again about like drug abuse, drug addiction, um, queerness, home, what home means. Um, there's a bit of religious angst. And um, I said if you're a fan of Ethel Kane, I really think you would like this poetry collection. I struggled a bit with this collection. It took me forever to read. I want to say I started reading this in 2022, but I finished it in April. And that's because to me, I feel as though I need to see like a clear theme or just an underlined or under... Like a thread. I need to feel a common thread behind a piece and be able to see where it's going. This one to me, since it's just the sonnets, there are no titles on the sonnets, there are no like clear um, markings of what is grouped together in terms of theme. Um, this is very big, big brain energy, I felt like. So if you are an advanced poetry reader, you might really like this. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this to someone who's trying to get into poetry, but I will share a few of my favorite lines. This is from page 14. And to smudge beauty is to discover ugliness, and to smudge ugliness is to be knocked back by splendor. How to suck the apple's poison is the one true meal, the invocation, and the last supper. As I was saying, very good. I love certain poems of this. As a whole, the collection just, I don't know, I don't think it's one of my favorites, but that's fine. Poetry is very subjective. It's an art, you know, you know this feel. You know the whole deal. <laughs> okay, and once again, poetry. I'm just gonna denote this section of the video. It's the poetry section. I read No Sweet Without Brine, poems by Cynthia Manick, and this poetry collection just came out recently. I was sent this by, um, Lee Stein, who is the author of Self Care, and um, I believe she gave my contact information to the publisher so that they would send me this, and I'm so happy they did. Honestly, my favorite poetry collection I've read so far this year. I absolutely love this. These are poems about black girlhood. It felt very nostalgic to me. Think like pink lotion, think hot comb on the stove and your mom's doing your hair in a hot kitchen. Like this is what this poetry collection felt like to me. There's um, Odes to Idris Elba, but more specifically, it talks about the no sweet without brine, meaning the sweet, the homey aspects of the black experience. As I was saying, one example that I think of, um, she literally mentions like pink lotion slicking back your hair that but then juxtaposing it to the brine aspects or the more acidic aspects of the black experience in america specifically she calls like you know um police brutality or injustices that are brought up against black people but overall i thought that this collection was so sweet it just held the perfect balance of bringing up these topics that are hard, but then also highlighting the beautiful aspects of the Black experience. And I just think that everyone should read this collection. It's a beautiful, beautiful poetry collection. But next, I got into my new release slash popular reads bag. And I read Big Swiss, and Big Swiss is a new release, I wanna say. It came out fairly recently. It's everywhere on social media <laughs> and like the nosy person I am I had to read it like I had to see what the hype was about what the conversations were about and if the book was good and I genuinely I truly enjoyed Big Swiss I think it got me out of a reading slump and it made me excited to read fiction again which I haven't felt like in a long time and like I said I'm nosy and this is the perfect book for nosy people one of my mutuals on TikTok described it as such and I'm forgetting who it was but that was like what convinced me to pick up Big Swiss. So basically we follow our main character, Greta, who is a bit older. I'm forgetting her exact age right now. 
but she works as a transcriber for a therapist. And within this, we are reading her um, transcriptions, the transcripts of the various townspeople who come to this guru basically for advice. Um, for therapy sessions, but then as she is working as a transcriber for this person who is creating a novel from his therapy sessions she meets one of his clients who she nicknames Big Swiss and She learns about Big Swiss's trauma and just a content warning. I haven't really seen this. It goes into detail It's a big graphic about um, an event that happens in Big Swiss's life so definitely look up warnings. They accidentally meet in a dog park and basically they become involved with each other in a very um, interesting affair. Big Swiss is married but um, it's interesting because Big Swiss is basically this opposite character to Greta. Greta very much internalizes her trauma and holds on to it and um, as a result she emotionally closes herself off to people whereas she becomes infatuated with Big Swiss because Big Swiss just is very frank about her trauma. These heavy moments, Greta is just such an interesting character. Think, I think of like um, the main character from Eileen. Eileen um, by Otessa Moshvig. Kind of that same like narrative voice is what Greta has and I really liked it. So great book, like I said, got me out of a reading slump, satisfied my need to know everything about everyone. And if you're nosy like me, definitely <laughs> read Big Swiss. And then up next, I read Rosewater by Liv Little, which is a debut novel. And this follows Elsie, who is a young artist trying to find her way. She turns 28 in the novel and essentially we meet her as she is evicted from her flat due to um, owing debt to her landlord and she is then forced to move in with her strained best friend they haven't spoken in a time in a while whose name is Juliet and from there we follow Elsie on her journey as she juggles um, imposter syndrome in the world of poetry. She is a poet who went viral um, when she was younger but she feels as though she is um, having that fear that she will never be successful as a poet. So it grapples with that and then also her trying to find the true definition of home, who and what a home is. It's amazing love this book it checks a lot of boxes for me writer slash poet r b references there was even a playlist that accompanies this book which i loved there's romance in here there's also like fun 20 something dating stories or like adventures that happen so just a very coming of age slice of life book that makes you feel happy i think that's it yeah so those are all of the novels that i've read novel slash poetry that i've read recently Thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, let me know what you've been up to since we've last seen each other. What books have you been reading? If you read any of these, let me know what you thought. And I'm so happy to be here and to be talking about books again. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!